John 10, 14. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. Sermon title, my sermon is entitled this morning, A Servant's Heart. Scripture reading comes to us from John chapter 15, reading from verse 19, reading from John chapter 21, sorry, reading from verse 15 to 19. John chapter 21, reading from verse 15 to 19. And I will be reading from the new King James Version. And it says, so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to, to Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my sheep. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, 
Do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walk where you wish. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Let's pray. Father, as I open your words right now, I pray that you will use me. Take the words of my mouth. Let it be acceptable in your sight, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. It was a long and dreary night. The disciples sp spent the night on the lake fishing and caught no fish. Cold, tired, hungry, and discouraged, they sat in the boat, probably wondering what to do next. I can just imagine Peter running his hands through the water, Thomas whistling, and ever so often Nathaniel would ask what time it was. I can just imagine that as they sat there in the boat on the quiet lake, every ripple that was made, every sound that they heard made them jump, believing it to be a fish. You see, in all of their days of fishing, they had never had any like this. They had been out at sea all night long and did not catch one fish. I am sure they must, must have talked amongst themselves, asking each other what was going on, where of all the fish is gone. And I'm sure one of them probably respond, long time passing. They probably wondered where, wondered, surely there must be at least one fish out there. You see, they did not know how long they had been out at sea, but when they looked out at the shore, there was someone sitting there. It was a bit misty, and they could not see clearly who it was. Then a voice called out to them, friends, have you any fish? At first, they did not recognize who it was, but when he instructed them to throw their nets on the other side of the boat, and suddenly they not only had one fish, but a net full. Then the disciple that Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Peter, knowing it was Jesus, threw himself into the water and went out to meet him. While the other disciples, the Bible said, bring the boat to land, dragging the net with them. The story goes on that when the disciples reached, reached, reached land, Jesus had already prepared for them the fish and bread and invited them to come and have breakfast, whereby he took the bread and fish and gave it to them. After breakfast, Jesus had a conversation with Peter. And it was this conversation, this conversation, Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? This is the first time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? You see, the word that Jesus uses here for love was agape. Agape is the kind of love that is perfect and pure, selfless and active. It is the kind of love that looks out for the one of the one that looks out for the interests of the one being loved, putting them ahead of self. So Jesus was saying to Peter, Do you love me with that kind of love more than these? You see, Jesus' first question could be translated in two ways. Number one, it may be that Jesus swept his hand around the boat, his net and equipment, and catches a fish and said to Peter, do you love me more than these things? Are you prepared to give them up, to give them all up, to abandon all hope of a successful career, to give up a steady job and a reasonable career, to give yourself forever, for, forever to my my people and to my work. It may be that Jesus looked at the rest of the disciples and said to Peter, do you think you love me more than they do? 
You see, if you remember that on the night that Jesus was arrested, Peter made some bold statement, some bold statements that he would not forsake Jesus. He goes as far as to say that he would die for Jesus if he had to. You see, and I believe that Peter meant every word there. You see, Peter was an impulsive man, and he acted before he thought, and he never really took the time to think through, to think things through before saying them. So on the night that Jesus was arrested, he was the first one to, to draw his sword like Zaro and cut off one of the guards here. Right there and then he was willing to fight if Jesus had not stopped him. But it was also that fateful night that he denied that he knew Jesus. He did it with such passion that no one dared challenge him. I believe that if they did, they would not live to tell the, tell the story or the tale. You see, Peter did all of this without thinking about the consequences. He made those statements without thinking about what he was saying and the importance of what it means to die for someone. So it may be that Jesus was gently reminding Peter about how once he had thought that he alone could be true and how his courage had failed him. So it is more likely that the second meaning is right because in his answer, Peter does not make comparison anymore. He was content simply to say, you know that I love you. And the word that Peter uses here is phileo, which is described as to be a friend or to be fond of an individual or an object. You see, three times Jesus asked Peter the one question, do you love me? You see, there was a reason for that because some scholars said because it was three times that he denied Jesus. And so Jesus gave him the chance to affirm his love for him three times. He gave Peter the chance to wipe out the memory of his threefold denial by a threefold declaration of love. But look at what Jesus did. You see, each time he asked Peter if he loved him, each time Jesus gave him a command, feed my lambs, take care of my flock, and feed my sheep. But what did Jesus meant when he said to feed my lamb, take care of my flock, and feed my sheep? You see, the first and the third imply only taking the sheep to pasture where they are fed. The second implies the total guardianship as shepherd exercises. You see, this threefold command does not mean that the sole responsibility of taking care of Christ's followers fall on Peter alone, but it's to everyone who profess to love God are called to be shepherd. You see, with Peter's declaration of love, he was to be the good shepherd like Jesus was when he was here on earth. You see, throughout Jesus' ministry, he was the perfect example of what it means to be a shepherd. So Peter had had firsthand experience of how a shepherd should take care of his flock. You see, three times, you see, the many times that he had been with Jesus, he saw the love and compassion that he showed towards those that were in need. He saw Jesus fed the 5,000, opened the eyes of the blind, raised the dead, cast out demons, and was a champion of those who were less fortunate. You see, those that Jesus could help, he helped. No one was turned away from him who was in need. You see, so when Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? It was not a casual question. He was not asking because he wanted to reinstate him as one of his disciples, but it was to show or tell Peter that if you profess to love me, you will have to love my followers even more. You see, Peter's love for Jesus was to be obvious in his care for the Lord's flock. 
So Peter was charged for Peter was charged to take care of for the take care for the take care of the flock by feeding and shepherding them. If you notice that Jesus used action words to describe Peter's role as a disciple. Jesus did not ask Peter to be the leader, but to take specific action, feed and take care of the sheep. You see, being a shepherd is no easy task. Sheep just don't take care of themselves. They require more than any other animal does. They require endless attention and constant care. To take care of sheep, you have to be patient, long-suffering, and understanding. Why? Because sheep have no sense of danger or direction. It is as if they are blind to everything around them. They just wandered around aimlessly. One minute you remove them from danger and they walk right back into it. We are no different from sheep. And it is not by accident that God calls us sheep. We are wayward, stubborn, hard of hearing, but yet the command he gave to Peter was to take care of his sheep. So contrary to popular belief, this command is not just to pastors and elders, but it's for everyone who professes to know God. You see, the mere fact that we are here means that we are saying to, to God that we love him. And once we profess to love him, he's saying to us that we must feed and take care of his sheep. But for some of us, Jesus has to repeat the question more than once. Do you love me? And we might be wondering why he keeps repeating it. You know why? Because some of us are selectively deaf, blind, and stubborn. We hear what we want to hear. We see what we want to see, and we do what we want to do. But Jesus, but Jesus is saying, if we profess to love him, the command still stands take, to take care of his flock. You see, his flock doesn't mean only those people that we like or feel comfortable with. It means everyone, whether they are Christians or non-Christians. <clears throat> Many of us think that being a leader means that we are in charge and, that all, and that's all we must do. But guess what? If we think like that, we miss the point. You see, leadership in ministry requires a servant's heart, contributing to others, not just directing, but developing people, not just by not just demanding that task be done, but helping them to do that task. You see, as shepherds, we are asked to nurture and care for God's flock, not just with Bible study and preaching, but to take care of their physical and social needs. You see, if you notice that in Jesus's ministry, most of his time was taken up ministering to people's physical and social needs. He never, we never overlooked or, or someone's need. He never looked at them and tell them to come back later. He never said to them, listen to what I have to say first, and then we will talk about your needs. No, he never, he ministered to them first. But many of us like to give Bible studies before we look or help someone. So I wonder if Jesus should come to any of us right now and ask that same question that he asked of Peter, lovest thou me? What would be our answer? For to love Jesus means to love others. It means feeling hurt when others are hurting. It means crying when someone is crying because they have lost a loved one or they may have lost their job or they may have lost their home and they have no other source or help. It means crying when someone is crying. It means listening to someone who just needs somebody to talk to, even though they might be talking rubbish. To love Jesus means giving hope to someone when they feel like giving up. It means carrying one another's burden. To love Jesus means being there for others when they need you. To love Jesus means 
We need, we have to be prepared to give up all that we have and will ever have to seek out the lost and to rescue the perishing. Loving Jesus means that we will have to be willing to go where he wants us to go and do what he calls us and what he wants us to do. God may call some of us to go to places that we that we may have never heard of. We may have to leave our family and friends for our families and friends just to reach the sheep, the lamb, and the flock that He has given us charge over. Taking care and reaching the flock will demand more out of us than we might not be able to give if we do not love God. So the driving force behind what we do for God should be out of our love for him. So when I asked Peter, do you love me? Jesus was saying that you have to be humble and be willing to serve others no matter who they are and what they have done. You have to have a servant's heart because to follow me, Jesus was saying to Peter, is not just a step but a lifelong commitment. You see, when Jesus asked Peter, lovest thou me? He was saying to him, search your heart deeply. Make sure it is love and not just an impulse. Make sure it is love and not just a sentimentality or a fanciful whim. Make sure, Peter, when you said you love me, it is true love. You see, when Jesus said to Peter, lovest thou me? He was saying, are you willing to give up your life now and follow me? Are you willing to be the shepherd that I have called you to be and feed and take care of my flock? Are you willing to have a servant's heart to serve others no matter who they are, where they are, they're, where they are from, or what they have done? Are you willing, Peter, to recognize that following me now is not just a step, but a lifelong commitment? When Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep, he knew that it would not be easy. And that's why he stresses the word love. For without love, it would be impossible to do. When Jesus gave the command to Peter to take care of his flock, he knew he would not be around for much longer. He knew that his ministry here on, on earth has come to a close. And now it is time to hand over the sheep, which is so precious to him, to those that profess to love him. If you notice that Jesus did not draw up a creed or a series of articles binding them to this duty. He did not draw contracts and ask them to put their signature to it. He rested the whole future of the work he has begun on one simple fact, their love for him. You see, because Jesus knew that to be a disciple takes more than words, it means action. So as long as we profess to love, to know God, as long as we profess to love him, the command for us to feed and take, the, the, the command is for us to feed and take care of his sheep. We are to be shepherd to those that are wayward, those that are stubborn, those that are in need. We are to be shepherd to those that are on the edge of life and looking for some thread of hope. We are to be shepherd to the unlovable, the down and out, those that society sees and deems as nothing. We are to be shepherd to those that are broken hearted, those that are listless, those that are wayward. Even if we don't like them, God is saying we need, we are to be shepherd to those, to those people. So three times over, the question comes, and the third is as the first, lovest thou me. You see, love is enough. Enough not only to save the apostles themselves, but enough to save the whole world. And all Jesus asks of us is that we love him enough to do the work that he has called us to do. 
He does not require much more from us than that because to love him means that we to love it means to love others. And when we love others, we will seek them out no matter where they are. Do you love me more than these? My prayer for us is that we can say, oh, precious Lord, I love you more than all of these, more than wealth, more than fame, more than the world. Do you love me more than these? I truly hope, church, I truly hope that if we cannot answer with a sincere heart right now, we will be willing to pray and ask God to show us how to love in the true meaning of the word so that we can become more like him each and every day. We know that to have a servant heart requires love because to follow Christ is not just a step, but a lifelong commitment. My prayer for us today is that when that question is asked, we will search our hearts deeply because most of us believe and think that when we accept Christ as our personal savior from sin, our role is just to sit in church and do nothing. But like Peter, Jesus gave us the command. And if we profess to love him, our role is to go out and seek out the lost so that they too will come to know Christ as their personal savior from sin. Do you love me? Jesus is seeking an answer today. And if the answer is yes, then you know what to do. Because following Christ is not just a step, it's a lifelong commitment. Thank you. 